Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Galaxy Report. The Galaxy Report is here as a part of the Daily Galaxy. This week's story, as well as many others, can be found at www.dailygalaxy.com. I'm Nicole Butcher, and this week's story, we're going to be diving into infinity. Or at least the staggering implications of infinite space-time. If space is truly infinite, observes Dan Hooper, head of the Theoretical Astrophysics Group at the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, in his book, At the Edge of Time, the implications are staggering. With an infinite expanse of space, it would be hard to see any reason why there would not be an infinite number of galaxies, stars, and planets, and even an infinite number of intelligent or conscious beings scattered throughout this limitless volume. That is the thing about infinity. It takes things that are otherwise very unlikely and makes them all inevitable. The universe we see around us is a tiny sliver of a much larger multiverse. The multiverse theory says that what we have all along been calling the universe is in fact nothing of the kind. Rather, it is but an infinitesimal fragment of a much larger and more elaborate system. An ensemble of universes, writes Paul Davies in his book, The Goldilocks Enigma, Why is the Universe Just Right for Life? Eternal inflation is one mechanism for generating a multiplicity. During the epooch of inflation, writes Davies, space expanded at an absolutely staggering rate, tearing space and everything in it apart. No two objects, even elementary particles, remained close enough to one another to interact for very long. Two objects separated by the width of an atom at the beginning of inflation were then trillions of miles apart from one another by the time it was over only a minuscule fraction of a second later. Inflation took regions of space that had once been neighbors and forever disconnected them from each other. So utterly complete was this act of sequestration that these regions became more than merely distant. Inflation left them in entirely different universes. But there is good reason, writes Hooper, to think that everything we can see in the cosmos represents only the smallest tip of the cosmic iceberg. During inflation, countless pieces of space were stretched into newly formed universes, populating a greater multiverse of disconnected worlds. And despite the fact that we have no way to observe them, says Hooper, not all universes within the greater multiverse will be similar to our own. In some, the laws of nature could be subtly different. In others, starkly different, dictated by a diversity of physical laws. Patches of space separated by inflation could evolve in such a way they come to support the existence of different forms of matter and forces. Collections of atoms and other particles located at specific places and specific times oriented in almost exactly the same way that they are in our Earth world. Within an infinite space, suggests Hooper, there are inevitably an infinite number of universes that are indistinguishable from our own. These worlds contain a star that is nearly identical to our sun which is orbited by a planet that is nearly identical to our Earth, which contains upon it people who are nearly identical to you and me, Hooper writes. If space, as we know it, extends forever, this conclusion is inevitable. All things and all events that are possible, no matter how unlikely, will exist and will occur within this greater collection of space. But, according to Hooper, there's a catch. Throughout the overwhelmingly majority of the multiverse, dark energy is so abundant as to make life impossible. No living observers will ever find themselves in such a place. In fact, any universe with more than about 10 times as much dark matter as there is in ours will almost certainly be devoid of life. Across the multiverse, life is very rare indeed. A frequently voiced criticism of the multiverse is that it isn't science because it can't be tested by an experiment or an observation, says Davies, who concludes with a note of optimism about the current state of the multiverse theory. Because of the theory of internal inflation, we cannot directly observe the other universes for two reasons. One, because they are inevitably far away, and two, because they are receding from us much faster than light. It can be validly objected that the theory rests on entities that are in principle unobservable and can't be described as scientific. 
It is conceivable, however, that indirect evidence could be found to support this theory. Sometimes in science, one can have confidence. Hooper told the Daily Galaxy that there are no new theories strengthening or weakening the case for the multiverse. However, Nobel Prize Law Courant physicist Steven Weinberg says it's not a requirement of a successful physical theory that everything it describes be observable, nor that a possible predictions of a theory be verifiable. In 1987, years before the discovery of dark energy, Weinberg argued in a controversial paper that our universe's vacuum energy density could be explained if we take it into account for the fact that we are living in it. All one needs for this to be the case is for there to be, exist an incredibly large number of universes. The idea of the modern multiverse had been born. In an interview with Quanta magazine, Weinberg proposed that our Big Bang universe is just a part of a larger multiverse, which he suggests could explain why some constants of nature, particularly dark energy, have values that seem to be very favorable of the appearance of life. It is only in Big Bangs where the dark energy favors the appearance of life that there are observers around to even ask these questions. This story was published first on the dailygalaxy.com by Avi Shapur, who's a research scientist with the MIT Kavali Institute for Astrophysics and Space Research. I'm Nicole Butcher, and it's been a pleasure journeying with you guys through the multiverse. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.